Welcome to chapter 20 of the book of Deuteronomy concerning war. They are on the border of the Jordan River to cross over into Canaan, where there are seven nations that they are to destroy. So God is telling them how they should act as they go forward to war. They had had a few skirmishes in the past with the Amalekites when they came out of Egypt, and then later when they went up through uh, the, the eastern side of the Dead Sea against Edom, Og, the king of Sihon, and now they're going to be going in. So it begins with the instructions, and if you should go forth to war or for war against your enemies, and you should behold a horse and rider and many more people than you, do not be fearful of them, for the Lord your God is with you, the one bringing you from out of the land of Egypt." If you see all these forces coming against you, he says, don't be fearful, for the Lord is with you. Now, that sounds easy to understand, but not necessarily easy to do. When you're fearful, when you see uh, something really terrible ahead, to uh, realize that God is going to be with you. It happened in the Old Testament where the king of Syria, it says, and he sent horses and chariots and a heavy force. This is Second Kings 6.14. And they came at night and surrounded the city, Dothan. And the minister, the servant, Litor Ghost, of the man of God, rose up early and went forth. And behold, the force was encircling the city and with horses and chariots. And uh, the servant said to him, O master, that is to uh, Elisha here, what shall we do? And Elisha said, Do not fear, for many are the ones with us over the ones with them. Yeah, where are they? And Elisha prayed and said, Kyrie, open his eyes and let him see. In the imperative. And the Lord opened wide the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and a chariot of fire surrounding Elisha. I believe we have the same thing uh, with us. The uh, God is with us. We're told in Matthew 4.11 that Jesus was confronted with a spiritual battle with Satan, the devil. And When the devil left, it says, then the devil left him, and behold, angels came forth forward and served to him. So I believe we have angels. We don't see them, but I believe they are around us, protecting us, guarding us, and fighting our battles, and so forth. Uh, Just because we don't see them doesn't mean that they're not there. And Jesus says in Luke 12, 7, But even the hairs of your head have all been counted. Do not fear then. So the fear, uh, God, the fear, if we take it to God, our fears in our situation, I believe that God will uh, alleviate it one way or the other. Maybe not. Maybe sometimes it was a test to see how we will go through these things as Jesus was uh, tested in Gethsemane and um, he sweated drops of blood and going through this terrible, fearful situation of knowing you're going to be tortured and hung up to die. But yet uh, he was, did go through this with the strength of God. And Jesus gives us these beautiful words in, uh, I think it's in Luke 12, 32. Fear not, small flock, for your father thinks well to give to you the kingdom. So God is with us. He wants us to have the kingdom, uh, the good things, even though we have to go through this um, time of trials and troubles and testing. So I have to get here. Do not be fearful of them, for the Lord your God is with you, the one bringing you from out of the land of Egypt. 
So don't fear in the imperative. And it will be whenever you should approach to the war that the priest drawing near shall speak to the people and shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, in the imperative, you go today to war with your enemies. Loosen not your heart. Uh, Don't become fearful and give up beforehand as they did earlier when the spies went into the promised land and came back and gave a bad report on how terrible these people were. Their hearts were loosened. I believe we also have this lesson to learn in that when we are faced with a spiritual war, that we are to um, not loosen our hearts. We are to pay attention to God's Word and look for His direction, everything that we do at that period of time. And then he says, fear not, nor be devastated. So you don't want to fear to the point of not being able to uh, do anything, not having any uh, power, just wanting to lay around or returning to the rear and so forth. Uh, This is not what we are to do. We are to, it says, nor turn aside from their face. I mentioned before about the um, pastor of this mission I was going to, how he was uh, had got on an elevator, and there was a couple of men in there, and the door closed, and all of a sudden they started cursing Jesus Christ this and Jesus Christ that, and saying a lot of bad things, and he couldn't wait to get away from them. And the door opened, and for some reason he didn't leave. He's, the door closed, and these men were still there. And as it started going, he started telling them about Jesus, who they were cursing. And he says, as soon as the door opened, the next time they went running off of the elevator. So we are to stand up in front of these things that are fearful and to take, um, uh, I suppose, take um, courage, sort of like with the football players that play NFL football and they're uh, are, uh, faced with somebody really rough or tough. They just, you know, grind themselves and get set themselves and uh, go after the other person and do their best. And then he continues, For the Lord your God going forth with you shall join in war with you against your enemies. So that's nice to know, good to know, that the Lord is with us when I facing enemies. Now, enemies could be spiritual or could be physical, and he shall preserve you. I have not had any physical warfare in my lifetime that I've had to face. My brother was killed in the Second World War, half-brother, Battle of the Bulge, uh, under George Patton's army. But I have had spiritual warfare. I found the best thing for me is to open the Word of God and start reading it and reading it and reading it. And for some reason, it seems like whenever these things happen, the Lord has me go to go to the right pace to see the correct thing to do and are to act. And it continues, and the scribes shall speak to the people, saying, now here's the directions for these people going to war. Who is the man building a new house? And he did not dedicate it. Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the war, and another man shall dedicate it. Wow. So this is not conscription. This is all a voluntary army that is going. So even if you had, if they had um, a um, if they had um, somebody that was doing something like here, building a house, then no, you don't have to go to war, finish it. And who is the man who ever plants a vineyard and was not glad from it, didn't drink any wine from it, basically? Let him go and return to his house, lest he should die in the war, and another man be glad from out of his labor. So if a vineyard, if you had vineyards and you had not 
uh, if they were just planted, you, you could wait until they had the first, the produce of the wine. And who is the man who has espoused a woman or a wife and did not take her, have relations? Let him go and let him return to his house, lest he die in the war, and another man shall take her. So all these exceptions. And the scribe shall add to speak to the people and shall say, Who is the man fearing and timid in the heart? Cowardly, mainly. Let him go and let him return to his house, that he should not make timid the heart of his brother as he. Pretty amazing uh, rules for warfare and for an army. Nothing really like it that I've seen. It's fantastically wonderful. I don't know if the Israelis today still adhere to these things or not. Interesting to find out. And it will be whenever the scribes should see speaking to the people that they shall place rulers of the military taking lead of the people. And if you should come forward to a city to wage war against it, that you should call them forth with peace. So basically, not something like the Japanese did with Pearl Harbor, a sneak attack, not giving notice. Uh, they are people, of course, they know when they're being surrounded by another army, so it's not quite the same. But give them a chance to surrender with peace rather than going to war. And it shall be if then they should peaceably answer you and open to you the gate, it shall be that all the people being found in it shall be tributaries to you and subjects to you. That means they will give money and do what you say. But if they should not obey you and should make war against you and shall besiege and you shall besiege it, the city, and the Lord your God shall deliver it into your hands, then you shall strike every male of it by carnage of the sword, Ooh. except the women and the belongings and all the cattle and all as much as exists in the city and all the chattel you shall despoil for yourself. And you shall eat all the plunder of your enemy whom the Lord your God gives to you. Thus you shall do for all the cities being far away from you exceedingly, not the seven nations within Canaan, but now uh, in the future if they go to war, uh, which are not from the cities of these nations, which the Lord gives charge to you to inherit their land. Uh, the, but behold, from the cities of these nations, which the Lord your God gives to you to inherit their land, you shall not take alive any one breathing, all of them from that from these cities, but you shall devote them to consumption, anathematite. The Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, Perizzite, Hivite, Jebusite, and Girgashite, they're all to be completely destroyed. In which manner the Lord your God gave charge to you, that they should not teach you to do all their abominations, as many as they made unto their gods, that you shall sin before the Lord your God. But if you should besiege around the city many days to wage war against it for taking it, you shall not utterly destroy its trees by putting upon them an iron axe. But of it you shall eat, that is, the trees that have fruit on them, but you shall not cut it down. Nor is a man to enter unto the tree in the grove from your presence for the siege mound. But the tree which you know that it is not fruit-bearing, this you shall annihilate and shall cut it and shall build a siege mound upon the city, whichever makes war against you until whenever it should be delivered up. So even nature, God has respect for in the war, if you are there and you're, those people were building these war, wooden war weapons. They were not to take the wood from the fruit trees, but only from trees that weren't fruit trees. Continues in chapter 21, the priests and the Levites as judicial mediators. 
We'll find out what that's all about in our next video seminar, and hope you'll join us. Till then, God bless.